Hello everybody, this is Talon with the next nutrition tier list, a series where I break down all the options in a given food group and rank them based on how nutritious they are and how they impact your health. Today we're going over drinks, or beverages. Honestly, couldn't find definitive proof that those were two different things. Anyway, drinks are probably the most overlooked part of your diet, not necessarily in the sense that they contribute as much to your daily nutrient intake, but they're more like the place where everything can go wrong. Chances are you drink throughout the entire day, not just with meals. When we drink, it's often more subconscious than when we eat, as your body doesn't get the same feelings of fullness from a drink as it does from solid foods, thus making it easier to consume more of whatever is in the drink, whether it be protein, micros, or sugars, and it's that last one where problems really start to show. Studies have shown that liquids make up 20 to 25% of calories in an average American diet, and anywhere from 30 to 40% of the added sugar consumed, with the numbers not being that different in other parts of the world. And hopefully, because you watched the video I made over added sugars, you recognize why this is such an issue. Now, drinks are not inherently bad. Obviously, you need liquid, and you totally have a glass of water with you while watching this video. Even drinks with sugar in them are not inherently bad, especially when they come from fruits and vegetable juices, which are basically just liquid fruits and vegetables. And while juices are usually not quite as nutritious as their base forms, the sugars are at least still natural. But again, I don't think you should try to get your nutrients from liquids. There are exceptions, but usually it's just less practical. Thus, this list is going to focus a lot more on how to get your daily liquids without destroying your liver and various other organs, and the benefits certain drinks have to offer that aren't necessarily nutrients related. So, looking at the tiers for this video, we're going to be comparing the nutritional contents and benefits of each drink against any shortcomings or health concerns that they may have. Keep in mind that these lists are ranked independent of each other, so an A-tier drink may not necessarily line up with an A-tier meat or an A-tier fruit. All numerical nutritional information on this list will be based on 8 fluid ounces of the drink, for the sake of consistency and ease of comparison. A couple other things that I want to mention before getting into the list proper, the first one being sugar. Unfortunately, we live in a world where pretty much everything on this list can have added sugars in it. I advise you always check the label, even on the drinks you wouldn't think would have any. The other one is alcohol. I don't have too many alcoholic drinks on this list, but I do have a couple. Alcohol is technically a macronutrient. It's its own separate thing, providing 7 calories per gram and no essential benefits to go along with it. And with all that out of the way, let's raise a toast and get to the list. First on this list, we've got apple juice. Apple juice is typically a mid-calorie drink with a decent amount of natural sugars, usually more than an apple in its base form. It contains some micronutrients when unfortified, but not nearly as much as an actual apple. Apple juice does inherently still contain a lot of the benefits of apples. Antioxidants, specifically polyphenols like quercetin, catechin, and chlorogenic acid, and fiber. However, the majority of these nutrients are found in the peel, and thus don't translate as well to its juiced form. That being said, apple juice is still shown to overall contribute to cholesterol regulation and protection against chronic diseases. But be warned, as this is a fruit juice that is more likely to have a pretty significant amount of added sugars, I'd advise you always check the label before purchasing. Drinking apple juice is strictly inferior to just eating the fruit, but you could definitely do a lot worse as far as drinks go. And for that, I'm going to put it in the C tier. Beer is an average calorie drink with a surprisingly high micronutrient content. I mean, it's still not great, but it's more than I was expecting. The majority of beer's calories come from its alcohol concentration. Again, alcohol is 7 calories per gram, and most beers typically fall in the 4-6% alcohol content range, obviously with exceptions. Now, studies have shown that light to moderate alcohol intake has been linked to a lower risk of heart disease, improved insulin sensitivity, and even bone density. Though the evidence on this is not nearly as thorough as I would like. And several other studies have shown that beer can lead to an alcoholic dependency and in excess has been linked with an increased risk of liver disease, depression, and certain cancers. And unfortunately, these studies are a bit more definitive. That, coupled with the fact that alcohol in and of itself is a pretty calorically dense macronutrient which may lead to unwanted weight gain in excess, means that I'm not going to advocate for you to drink beer, but I'm also not going to pretend like it's the worst thing in the world. I'm going to put beer in the D tier. Beet juice is a lower calorie drink with an actually existent micronutrient profile. It's a deceptively good source of iron, which is needed for hemoglobin, a type of protein in red blood cells that carry oxygen throughout the body, and it's one of the few forms of liquid that's a reliable source of folate and potassium. However, the main draw of beet juice and beetroots in general is the link between it and improved cardiovascular performance by increasing plasma nitrate levels. 
And just like in their solid form, beet juice contains a solid amount of betaine, an antioxidant that's mainly known for its liver protective benefits. It's also a pretty good source of fiber for a drink. All in all, one of the better and typically less sugary juices that I'm going to put in the A tier. Black tea is a virtually calorie-free drink with one notable micronutrient. Most teas are a good source of manganese, and black tea is no exception. Manganese is used to form bones, connective tissues, and sex hormones. Black tea contains a variety of antioxidants, polyphenols like catechins, theoflavins, and theorubigans, which are shown to regulate cholesterol and blood sugar levels and benefit healthy gut bacteria, and flavonoids that are shown to boost heart health. Black tea usually has more caffeine than other teas, but not as much as coffee. Caffeine, of course, mainly functioning as a nervous system stimulant. Generally, black tea has no consistent health concerns, but if you are sensitive to caffeine or experience any irregularities, just know that it's not unheard of. Overall, it's pretty hard to go wrong with black tea, and it's going to be going in the A tier. Carrot juice is an average calorie drink with a straight-up great micronutrient profile. Just like carrots, this is one of the best ways to get your carotenoids, which the body turns into vitamin A, an antioxidant mainly known for eye protective benefits. It's also a solid source of many other micronutrients that carrots naturally contain in their base form. Vitamin K, vitamin C, vitamin B6, potassium, and vitamin E. Carrot juice is a solid immune booster of a drink and is shown to have anti-cancer and blood sugar regulatory properties. This is one of the most standout examples of actually being able to get a decent amount of nutrients from a drink, and because of that, I'm going to put it in the A tier. Tart cherry juice is a higher calorie drink, naturally being a little more sugary with a decent micronutrient profile. Just like cherries, it's a solid source of vitamin C, a powerful antioxidant, but the main draw of tart cherry juice is that it's a go-to drink for muscle soreness relief, especially for more long endurance exercise. But it's also shown to be useful for muscular strength recovery, just not as effectively. This is another fruit juice that doesn't always contain added sugars, but often does, so check the label. Overall, a fine fruit juice with some unique qualities, I'm going to put tart cherry juice in the B tier. Coconut water is a lower calorie drink, lower in sugar with a decent micronutrient profile. It's a surprisingly good source of vitamin C, manganese, and potassium. Coconut water is shown to be beneficial for blood sugar regulation, overall heart health, and kidney stone prevention. Nothing spectacular, but a very inoffensive drink. I'm going to put coconut water in the B tier. Coffee is a very low calorie beverage with a mild micronutrient profile. It's one of the go-to sources of caffeine, a central nervous system stimulant that is shown to combat fatigue and increase energy levels. But it's also shown to protect liver health, promote heart health, and improve brain function long term by combating Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, though not quite as definitively. It's also often used to improve athletic performance, but again, not as consistently. Coffee also contains antioxidants, including chlorogenic acid and ferulic acid, which have key anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer benefits. A few studies I found showed that many Americans get more antioxidants from coffee than from food. Now, I don't know if that's good or not, but it does prove that coffee is a solid source. While there are several potential health benefits, there's also several potential drawbacks. Coffee in many people can be quite addictive and can induce feelings of anxiety or disrupt sleeping patterns. Caffeine in and of itself can be a bit of a double-edged sword, but overall, coffee offers a lot more than it risks, and I'm going to put it in the A tier. Cranberry juice is an average calorie drink with a solid micronutrient profile. It's a good source of vitamin C, vitamin K, and vitamin E, but the main draw of cranberries, and by extension cranberry juice, is how it helps with UTIs, due to cranberries containing proanthocyanidins that prevent bacteria from attaching to the urinary tract lining. Cranberry juice also contains antioxidants like quercetin that prevent chronic diseases and is shown to benefit heart and digestive health, though not as definitively. Unfortunately, cranberry juice is one of the fruit juices that very commonly comes with added sugars. I highly suggest you check the label before getting some. Cranberry juice is an overall very healthy, if not a little sugary drink choice that I'm going to put in the B tier. Energy drinks are an interesting topic. They're typically pretty average calorie with a ton of sugar and a variable micronutrient profile. Energy drinks seem to just like to take things to the extreme. We'll start with the good. Usually they are fortified with extreme amounts of B vitamins, vitamin C, and amino acids like taurine, and they can improve short-term alertness and brain function due to being highly caffeinated, which as I said earlier can be a double-edged sword. But the main problem with most energy drinks is that they're typically just so sugary. 
Some are better than others, and some made a conscious decision to omit sugars altogether, instead replacing them with artificial flavoring and sweeteners, which is just a whole other can of worms. In excess, energy drinks are shown to lead to heart issues, liver issues, and energy inconsistency. They just can't make up for that much sugar. Maybe there is some merit there, but I just don't think I could get myself to advocate for anyone drinking these, and thus, they're gonna go in the F tier. Grape juice is typically a higher calorie drink with a mild micronutrient content. It's a solid source of manganese and often has added vitamin C. But beyond vitamin C, grape juice is a good source of antioxidants, notably flavanols that are shown to reduce inflammation and manage cholesterol levels. Grape juice is also shown to improve immune and digestive health and promote good gut bacteria. Now, grape juice is inherently one of the more sugary fruit juices and often has some added sugars as well. Always check the label. All in all, grape juice is one of the lesser fruit juices, but could definitely be a lot worse. It's gonna go in the C tier. Grapefruit juice is an average calorie drink with a pretty impressive micronutrient profile. It is a citrus fruit juice, which means it naturally contains a lot of vitamin C, a powerful antioxidant, and a solid amount of beta carotene, which the body converts into vitamin A. It's also rich in antioxidants beyond vitamin C and carotenoids, containing lycopene, a notable anti-cancer, and several flavanols that mainly contribute anti-inflammatory properties. Like all citrus fruits and juices, grapefruit juice contains citric acid, which is beneficial for skin health and kidney stone prevention. Now, grapefruit juice is shown to mess with certain medications by inhibiting an enzyme that your body uses to metabolize said medications, and it may or may not contain added sugars, so it never hurts to check. Overall, I would say this is one of the better fruit juices, and I'm going to put it in the B tier. Green tea is a very low-calorie beverage with a mild micronutrient profile. It contains significantly less caffeine than most caffeinated beverages, which can be good or less good depending on what you're looking for. However, compared to most other teas, green tea contains a higher amount of epigallocatechin 3 gallate which gives it most of its medicinal and anti-disease properties, including anti-cancer, anti-Alzheimer's, and antimicrobial, and has a calming effect to counteract the caffeine. It also contains L-theanin, which is shown to stimulate the brain and combat feelings of anxiety. There aren't really any consistent health concerns with green tea, but some alertness issues and irregularities associated with it are not unheard of. Overall, a perfectly fine drink that I'm going to put in the A tier. Hot cocoa, assuming it's made with milk, is a higher calorie drink with a decent micronutrient content that mainly just comes from the milk. So when made with milk, expect it to come with some complete protein, milk fat, and vitamins and minerals like vitamins B2 and B12, vitamin D, calcium, and phosphorus. And it's basically just that, but with some cocoa and typically a good amount of added sugar. Truly not the worst thing to indulge in, but it probably shouldn't be your go-to hot drink. And with that, it's going to go in the D tier. Lemonade, when made properly, is an average calorie drink with a mild micronutrient profile. Though limited, the lemon does offer a good amount of vitamin C and citric acid, which aids skin health and kidney stone prevention. Unfortunately, lemonade is usually a sugar bomb, but if you make it yourself, you can kind of control that. Overall, lemonade is a pleasure drink that does have a little merit to it. And because I don't think I'd be able to live with myself if I put it in the F tier, I'm going to put it in the D tier. Whole milk is a higher calorie drink with an impressive micronutrient profile, and it's also probably the most complex drink on this list. First off, a cup of milk provides about 8 grams of complete protein, meaning it contains notable quantities of all essential amino acids. The proteins in milk can be broken down into two separate types, whey and casein. Casein is insoluble and makes up the majority of protein in milk. Casein is shown to encourage mineral absorption, specifically calcium and phosphorus, and whey makes up the majority of the rest of it, mainly being made of the amino acids leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Whey is shown to manage blood pressure levels and is the crux of most protein supplementation. But one cup of whole milk also offers about 8 grams of fat, something that is very unique in natural liquids. Fat concentration obviously varies based on how you buy it, but generally whole milk is about 3.25% fat, Reduced fat milk is about 2% fat, and low fat milk is about 1% fat. But all milk generally follows the same ratio of about 70% saturated fat, 25% monounsaturated fat, and 5% polyunsaturated fat, while also containing natural trans fats, notably conjugated linoleic acid. Milk also contains several unique and essential micros. Calcium, which is mainly used to maintain strong bones and teeth. Phosphorus, which is used for growth and tissue repair. Vitamin B2, which aids in red blood cell production, the all-essential vitamin B12, which is needed to form DNA, 
and milk is usually fortified with vitamin D, which helps the body absorb and retain calcium and phosphorus and combats inflammation. Now let's talk potential negatives. First off, milk does contain sugar, but the sugar naturally found in milk you don't really have to be concerned about. That being said, some brands do add sugar, so be aware of that. But the main thing people think of when they think of milk is lactose. Lactose is one of those naturally occurring sugars in milk. Some people are incapable of breaking down lactose into glucose before entering the bloodstream, and this may lead to some gastrointestinal issues, diarrhea, or bloating. That being said, the majority of people don't digest lactose perfectly, but they can still benefit from drinking milk without any real issue. Milk allergies also exist, affecting an estimated 5% of the population. But overall, milk is an entirely unique and very nutritious drink. Just because it's not quite as good as we used to think doesn't mean that the benefits aren't still present and notable. I'm going to put milk in the A tier. Orange juice is an average calorie drink with a solid micronutrient profile. Like all citrus fruits and juices, orange juice packs a good amount of the antioxidant vitamin C, which aids with bone formation, wound healing, and gum health, and a notable amount of citric acid, which is beneficial for skin health and kidney stone prevention. It also contains a variety of flavonoids that mainly contribute a cholesterol-lowering effect, and carotenoids that get converted into vitamin A. Now, orange juice is naturally a bit sugary, and certain brands may even add more sugars. But at its best, the good outweighs this, and it can be used to your advantage, and I'm going to put orange juice in the B tier. Pineapple juice is a higher calorie drink with a pretty impressive micronutrient profile. It's got a good amount of manganese and vitamin C, and even in juice form still contains bromelain, an enzyme unique to pineapples that are shown to reduce inflammation, improve digestion, strengthen immunity, and boost heart health. Pineapple juice is also typically one of the few drinks with a good amount of fiber, about 3 grams per cup. The problem is that pineapple juice is typically one of the more sugary fruit juices, and often has even more added. While it has its merits, I can't put it any higher than the C tier. Pomegranate juice is a somewhat higher calorie drink with a decent micronutrient profile. It's a solid source of vitamin K, and is one of the best fruit juices when it comes to antioxidants. Polyphenols like punicalogens, anthocyanins, and hydrolysable tannins with punicalogens having a notably strong anti-inflammatory effect, and elegitinins, which protect against brain oxidative damage and disease. Pomegranate juice is also shown to be very beneficial for healthy gut bacteria. Pomegranate juice does naturally have a fair amount of sugar and often has even more added, but has a lot more to offer than other sugary drinks. Overall, I think pomegranate juice belongs in the B tier. Prune juice is a higher calorie drink with a solid micronutrient profile. It's a good source of vitamin B6, vitamin C, potassium, manganese, and iron. And it's also got a solid amount of fiber for a drink, making it one of the go-to choices for constipation. The problem is, that's a lot of sugar, and that high sugar content seems to be pretty consistent. Prune juice is not a bad fruit juice by any means, and it certainly has its uses, but I'm going to put it in the C tier. Soda, specifically cola soda, but they're realistically all pretty similar, is an average calorie drink with a non-existent micronutrient profile. Now, sodas do have caffeine, which does have some benefits, and carbonated drinks are shown to be beneficial for digestion and relieving constipation. But in case you can't tell, I'm really reaching here. Realistically, sodas are a sugar bomb and often the worst kind of sugar, high fructose corn syrup, but I think everyone already knew that. No real surprise, sodas are going in the F tier. Diet soda, again we'll specifically look at diet cola, is a low calorie drink with a slightly less non-existent micronutrient profile. And this is one of the more controversial drinks on this list. The main reason being the lack of sugars makes this seem like the lower calorie, healthier option. The problem is, instead of sugars, diet sodas use artificial sweeteners such as aspartame, cyclamates, saccharin, acesulfame potassium, and sucralose. And these are weird. Some studies show little to no health risks, while some conclude that they're worse than the sugar in regular soda, with a strong link to chronic diseases like heart disease and cancer. The effects on weight loss compared to regular soda is mixed. Obviously, the lack of sugar is good, but many studies still find that diet soda drinkers are just as likely to be obese as regular soda drinkers. There's a few potential reasons for this. First off, artificial sweeteners may provoke feelings of hunger. Second, it could just be a lifestyle issue and eliminating one factor hardly matters. Or, people use diet soda to justify eating worse. Regardless of what it is, it's not good. But even if we pretend for a second that artificial sweeteners are completely harmless, diet sodas are still not nutritious. At all. 
Diet sodas also almost always contain certain acids, which are not inherently bad but are linked to tooth erosion, and also usually contains a variety of artificial flavors and preservatives. So there's a chance diet sodas aren't quite as bad as their sugary counterparts, but I cannot in good faith say that I would recommend them anymore. They're also going in the F tier. Sports drinks are typically lower calorie drinks with minimal micronutrient content. Now this feels weird to say, but the main draw of sports drinks is those sugars for quick energy during or after exercise. Most sports drinks have a decent amount of sugar, but some actively have none. The other highlight is the electrolytes that they're supposed to contain, like potassium and sodium. And when it comes to both sugar and electrolytes, some brands are definitely better than others. These are specifically designed for exercise, so when you drink them while not exercising, they're really nothing more than just sugary water. And even while exercising, they're usually unnecessary for most people and most types of exercise. They're not the worst thing in the world, having less sugar than even most fruit juices. But overall, I think I'm going to put them in the C tier. Sweet tea is usually an average calorie drink with a notable micronutrient. Exactly one, because teas are naturally a good source of manganese. Sweet tea is usually just basically black tea with extra sugar. Obviously, different brands have different amounts of sugar, and even at their worst, sweet teas are not normally as bad as sodas. All that to say, I think sweet tea best belongs in the D tier. Tomato juice is a low-calorie drink with an impressive micronutrient profile. It's a good source of vitamin C, an antioxidant used in bone formation and wound healing, and alpha and beta carotene, which get converted into vitamin A. And just like regular tomatoes, tomato juice is rich in lycopene, an antioxidant with very strong heart health and sun and cancer protective benefits. While most don't, there are still quite a few tomato juice products that do contain notable amounts of added sugar and salt. Overall, tomato juice is a solid contender for the healthiest fruit juice, and I'm going to put it in the A tier. Water is a suspiciously low-calorie drink with a non-existent micronutrient profile. While drinking water typically contains minuscule amounts of calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium to raise the alkalinity of the water, they don't really contribute anything nutritionally. Water doesn't offer anything, good or bad, that the other drinks do besides just water, the most important nutrient. And for that, it will be our sole resident of the top tier. And last up, we have wine. Red and white wines are not that different nutritionally, both being higher calorie drinks with mild micronutrient profiles. Red wine averages between 12 to 15% alcohol, while white wine typically falls between 5 to 14% alcohol. Again, alcohol being 7 calories per gram. Beyond that, red wine seems to barely but consistently outperform white wine in pretty much every way having a higher concentration of key micronutrients like manganese, potassium, and iron, and antioxidants like resveratrol, catechin, epicatechin, and proanthocyanidins, which altogether reduce inflammation and the risk of heart disease and cancer. In moderation, wine has been shown to reduce insulin resistance and the effects of dementia and depression. But in excess, it can lead to a potential dependency and an increased risk of developing depression and liver diseases. All in all, wine is not really the kind of thing that I'm going to suggest people drink, but it does have its uses. It's going to round out our list in the D tier. And there you have it. Drinks. Probably not much you weren't expecting, but probably not something you think about much throughout the day. I feel the need to reiterate that in general, drinks are not what's going to make your diet, but they are the most likely to break your diet. You've got to be pretty on top of what you're drinking, lest you end up having a lot more sugar than you ever anticipated. But on the flip side, most people don't get enough water, whether that be because they forget or because just plain water is pretty boring. I don't think I've been shy about saying that many of the drinks on this list have their place. And when there's a time to indulge, or when you feel the need to drink your protein or drink your illness away, enjoy it. Just don't forget about the food group that is most oftentimes the silent killer. Now if you enjoyed the video, or at the very least learned a little something, I encourage you to subscribe because there's plenty more of these on the way. Let me know which food group you'd like to see me rank next, and remember that all I ask is that you advocate for your body. After all, you only get the one.